A very warm welcome back to Globetrotting. Subscribe if you haven't already, with over 70% of viewers still unsubscribed. The Airbus A380 does remain today the world's largest passenger plane, despite production recently ceasing. The Super Jumbo entered service with a mission to redefine long-haul flying. It certainly achieved this, but maybe not at the scale initially imagined. So what are the problems with the aircraft in 2025? What is its true status? And what is next? While the A380 initially debuting as the a 3 XX as a development study in the late 1900s aimed to redefine the long-haul wide-body space and finally give airlines the alternative that they were maybe crying out for and to of course challenge the long-term success enjoyed at Boeing with the 747. However, by the time the A380 as it was to be eventually named came to market, well, a great deal had truly changed and airlines required no longer quad-engine super jumbos but instead something that was far more efficient and that was through wide bodies with twin engines. As a result of all of this, despite attaining interest from several high-profile international carriers and driven by commitments from Emirates, the eventual largest customer, the A380's appeal was low, launching, and analysts argue, the wrong time, an unfortunate set of events. There were also delays in the program's launch, which added on time to the release, certainly that more felt couldn't really be afforded given the evolving segment and the reliance on such planes was shifting dramatically away. Boeing also aimed to compete with the A380, which aimed to compete with its long-standing 747-400 by releasing the last iteration of this Queen of the Skies program in the 747-8. Unfortunately for Boeing, the 747-8 would certainly be a failure from a commercial standpoint, amassing fewer orders than the A380 and never having the backing from a company such as Emirates. Aside from this, it also had certainly limited adoption from airline customers who purchased it. When the A380 entered service, emerging wide bodies from Airbus and Boeing aimed to redefine the long-haul space just as the A380 intended. However, the latter, well, the critical difference lay that this wide body didn't have the same appeal as other options on the market to airlines. It was a risk too. A primary factor in the adoption was it filled a niche and not all airlines were capable of purchasing and flying such a large aircraft, to be expected. Therefore, unlike a 737 or A320, many airlines just couldn't fathom the risk to take on such a plane, from the sheer scale of investment that would be required to actually purchase a unit to so much more. That limited figure was further reduced when most airlines analysed whether there would be risk and reward, whether the risk would be worth the reward. From complications that would emerge in maintenance to the cost to get the plane in the skies, in markets that were only continuing to fluctuate, from fuel prices to other avenues such as the airline's day-to-day -day operation, for many, it was a super jump that didn't make sense. Ultimately, airlines were unwilling to take on the risk at the rate Airbus may have first thought of, causing disappointment in just how widespread the adoption was. Highlighted by even some airlines that took the type in smaller numbers, such as Thai Airways, Malaysia Airlines, Air France and China Southern, it was a plane for them that couldn't really be justified when it actually arrived. When the COVID-19 pandemic emerged, airlines were looking to solidify their business and they were removing less efficient planes to cut costs. Most of the A380s ended up being the first on the chopping board, especially for the airlines I just touched on. Because of the significant costs associated, these airlines long felt that the A380 was not the right fit for their business. Furthermore, these airlines also needed to find routes that would make the aircraft profitable when flying, and in many cases, that was something they just couldn't justify. There was no route on the market that was truly going to be able to be profitable across a long-term basis, like maybe a company such as British Airways, Emirates or Qantas. Despite production ending for the A380 in 2021 and many failed sales pushes that led to the production coming to a close in the 2010s, the A380 did defy odds and has experienced a bit of a resurgence in overall usage, which has been fantastic to see. Many airlines had either permanently retired the aircraft or sent their units to the scrapyard for the long term, without really viewing them at any point needing to return to service. They felt that they had moved on. However, when supply chains collapsed after the industry emerged from the pandemic and we saw the delivery of new aircraft could not be facilitated at the rates airlines would require to meet resurging demand, airlines 
needed to look at all available resources for a short-term solution to a broader problem. Despite the unfavourable nature of the plane and the financial problems certainly associated with it for most operators, aircraft such as the A380 did remain a choice for reactivation for some companies to cope with the delays in acquiring the A380's replacement. Again, not a dedicated replacement, but a more modest alternative. For many airlines, it did present a pretty fascinating turn of events. The need to temporarily bring back an out of favour and inefficient aircraft such as the A380 because of complications in acquiring what many airlines would consider it again, the long-term replacement. Look at Qatar Airways. They have been very vocal about their disdain for the A380 program, calling it their biggest mistake. But now, the A380 is active and flying and doing a job. Etihad Airways didn't necessarily come out and say they hated the A380, but certainly found that they had no place for it anymore. And now it's back with vengeance, being deployed to markets right around the world. And while this could only be considered as maybe a short-term solution, it shows that there has been a need for it. So what's next? Well, in 2025, the fate of the A380 remains a fascinating question that is left unanswered for many airlines. Despite its problems and inefficiencies, it's a jet that just won't go away. It's active in many fleets right around the world and is certainly doing a job. However, it is still broadly considered, like I touched on, a short-term solution, unless you're, say, a Dubai-based carrier by the name of Emirates, who at their peak had over 120 active A380s in their fleet. That number has now reduced, but the thing is their reliance is still very much much the same. They believe in this plane and know it's going to play a big part moving forward. Emirates is expected to be the last airline to retire the 380, but with the hope to continue flying that type into the 2040s. However, not airlines are of the same viewpoint and are instead already making plans to farewell the series. Qantas, for example, has been a long-time backer of the program and will continue flying it into the 2030s, but it has unveiled its succession plan, which involves the A350-1000. Other airlines are looking to part ways with the type at a point when they can consider the themselves to have enough of your next generation wide bodies to really cover capacity and not lose out to competitors. Unfortunately, the airline's fleet forecasting has proved complex with the delayed certification of planes such as the 777X and the inability for these new gen jets to be delivered on time. While Emirates has called for an A380neo, those have gone unanswered and the reality of the program is it's only going to continue to fade away in time. With the number of active units gradually reducing. That is the natural progression of an aircraft program that doesn't have a dedicated replacement. Airbus, they've moved on. They're looking towards some of their more best-selling single-aisle jets to take up the space of the A380 while prioritizing planes such as the 350. While holding a lot of promise, the A380 struggled quite significantly due to its launch, and this led to many problems. The associated size, costs, and a limited number of airlines that could take it on. And when the global pandemic arrived, while well, the A380 was a problem problem for these airlines trying to reduce costs. What do you do with a problem? Well, some may look to work through it. Others may look to rid themselves of that. And we saw that occur at many airlines. Keen to hear your take down below in the comments on where the A380 stands now or in 2025. Does it have a long-term future or is it still a short-term outlook for you? Thanks for watching. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your next industry analysis. And we'll fly